You were non-physical energy before you came into this body, but you still are the largest part of you, non-physical energy. And so as you come into this body, oh, such a wonderful thing you've done. And you sift and sort and you create this vortex, which is your future manifestations. But also, once you launch a rocket of desire, everything changes. You are adding to the expansion of the universe with every exposure to life that you are living. So you are creating this vortex and law of attraction and your inner being source. What you want to call God is focused upon your expanded ideas, your expanded notions, your expanded ideals, your expanded desires. And so once life causes you to ask for something, even if it's such a soft, gentle asking that it's imperceivable to you long term. Your asking never stops being heard and it becomes greater and greater and greater until it is almost tangible. You can almost see it and hear it and smell it and taste it and touch it, but you can't because it's still a vibrational version. And the thing that goes wrong, not wrong. Yeah, wrong. No, not so. It's not wrong. Nothing's ever wrong. The thing that goes, uh, uh, no, it's not wrong. The thing that you do that prevents you from having all of the rightness that you want and deserve is that as you stand in vibrational relationship to your new desire often because what you're observing doesn't show you what you want in the absence of what you can see and hear and smell and taste and touch you doubt and when you doubt you disallow your desire to turn into reality some years ago jerry was talking talked about it for a long time esther and abraham are doing it now a book called turning thoughts to things and the reason that Jerry wanted others to understand is because he had noticed from his own life experience that if he could find a desire and he could somehow keep it alive that it would become a tangible reality he wrote a paper many years ago and the title of his paper was keep your ideas to yourself until they are fully developed because he noted so many people that he was counseling about financial matters that when they wanted something and they began to speak to others who doubted their ability to accomplish it, they would undermine their confidence by forcing them to focus upon the reality that they were currently living. What makes you think you could do something like that when all you've ever done is something like this? And what we want you to understand is if it is in your vortex and it is, there's so much in there it would keep you busy for 20 or 30 lifetimes. If it is in your vortex and if you have found a moment here and a moment here and a moment here where you are not in disharmony with what's in your vortex as your vortex becomes stronger and stronger by the non-physical focus upon it. And we want you to know there is non-physical focus upon it. Once the idea comes to you, most of it is already done. Once the idea occurs to you, it is so close to physical fruition. If you would just stop doing that thing you do that doesn't let it become. And that thing you do is think in opposition to it by facing the reality where it isn't yet. That's like saying, I'm going to get in my car tomorrow and I'm going to drive down to San Diego. And the whole time you're not in San Diego, screaming at yourself in disgust and dismay at the fact that you're not yet where you intended to be. Damn me. I'm just not good at this. I wanted to be in San Diego and look at me. I'm still in Long Beach. I'm still in Long Beach. What's wrong with me? It's probably my mother's fault. She didn't do me right. It's probably not good in a past life. And now I'm being punished. And what we want you to understand is that there's this delicious process, this delicious process of your thought becoming a thing. You get to watch the entire universe come into cooperation with you to accomplish anything that you desire. There is nothing that is off limits for you. If this time space reality has a wherewithal to fill your vortex and become a dream or an idea or a desire within you, it is our absolute promise. That this time space reality has the wherewithal to deliver the goods but you have to stay in harmony with your own desire we have nothing more to say to you or anyone else ever <laughs> you and a lot of others like you have been dabbling with these notions especially in the sports world they know about positive mental attitude they know about telling it the way they want it to be. 
But we want you to use the resources that you were born with, this magnificent emotional guidance system that lets you know in every moment whether you are allowing your desire to become more or whether you are preventing your desire to come more. And the way you feel in every moment is the indicator of whether you're allowing it or disallowing it. So when you're discouraged, you're not allowing it. And when you're on, you're not either. And when you're disappointed, you're not either. And when you're mad at somebody else, you're not either. And when you are resentful, you're not either. When you're feeling sorry for yourself, you're not either. When you are happy, you are allowing your desire to progress. When you are feeling appreciation, when you feel interested in something. So sometimes Esther said this to us in the beginning. Well, if it were different, it would be easier for me to feel better. And we say, we know that, but that's so conditional. And it's not only conditional, it's conditional in a way that will never work for you because that's like saying, give me what I want to create so that I can be happy about having created it. And we say, you got to be happy or you can't create it. So most humans run around this planet and they look at what others have created and instead of it bolstering them and making them ecstatic about the potential of their own creation, instead, they feel jealous about what that person has created or mad at them for taking too much of the pie. Like there is one big old pie and you're all just chopping it up. And if somebody gets really good at pie getting, then the rest of you are deprived from it. And you develop whole civilizations and government processes that say, oh, well, we're just going to take all this pie back and we're going to divvy it up in equal little pieces. And we're going to give everybody their equal share of the pie. And we say, and some will take their piece of the pie in appreciation and it will grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And they will thrive beyond measure. And others will be so upset about the poultry little piece of pie that they got that they will feel uncomfortable about the crappy little piece of pie that they got and their pie will not replenish. So we want you to know that this is a seminar about pie. <laughs> this is a seminar about getting into that place where all things that you want will expand. We want to talk to you about tapping in, tuning in, turning on to this vibration of who you really are. So that you stay consistently in the replenishing mode. When you're in the replenishing mode, that means you never get tired. You never have enough kind words to give to someone. You don't feel depleted. You've got enough energy to go. The ideas keep flowing. You don't worry about somebody taking your ideas or stealing your ideas or misusing your ideas. You don't worry about them getting your pie because, you know, there's more pie coming. It's in the oven all the time. There's more pie. There's more cake. There's more of everything that you want. Everything that you want is in the becoming stage. You have come to be the vibrational discoverer of it. And so that happiness that you felt when that desire came into your conscious awareness, that's not just the first step. There have been many steps before that. But that's the first step in you realizing how much fun it is to turn these thoughts into things, these vibrations to thoughts and these thoughts to things, because you are the creator of your own reality. No one else can do it for you. No one else can put you in the receptive mode. Esther said to Jerry one time, you make me so happy. He said, that's not my plan. She said, okay. <laughs> All righty then, never mind. He said, I don't want to make you happy, but I don't want to get in the way of your happiness either. Because he understood even then that your happiness is an inside job. Your happiness is about your relationship with who you really are. You came into this body and you're mixing it up and you're launching these rockets of desire and you are vibrationally becoming. And the larger part of you, the source part of you, we've been for years calling that your inner being, has expanded as a result of your life here in this body. And has a vibrational frequency going on because of who you always have been and because of who you now are being. That non-physical part of you is a very strong, largest part of you. And law of attraction is responding to that vibrational state of being. So as you launch these rockets, you have no choice if you want to feel good other than to vibrationally keep up with the rockets that you've launched. And when you think about it, the worst you ever feel is when you know you want something and you think you can't have it. That's such a flawed premise because that is never, ever true. Once it has come into your conscious awareness, it's a slam dunk. How long it takes is up to you and how much willingness you have to sort of stifle those negative words when you feel like speaking them 
and find another way of saying it until you feel better. Reach for the thought that feels best. Reach for the thought that feels best. Practice the first book that Hay House published for Jerry and Esther. It's out on the table. It's called Ask and It Is Given. It has 21 processes in it. Every one of the process we wrote so that you would understand how to close that gap. No matter where you are in relationship to what you want, how to close that gap. So, what do you want to talk about? Nothing's off limits. We're eager to talk to you about whatever matters to you. We see our best advantage to you in helping you close that gap. We also think that it would be a fun thing for us today. If you could realize as a result of the conversations that we're having, how a good feeling thought ah, turns into such wonderful things and bad feeling thoughts turn into such not wonderful things. It's just the law. You just can't get around it. And nobody's thinking for you, only you. So if you want to, when we're visiting, it's up to you. We won't demand it from you. We might attract it from you. <laughs> I think it might be interesting for you to realize and let others realize it too. When something that you're living isn't the way you want it, what thoughts you were thinking that caused that manifestation. Because every manifestation comes as the further becoming of some thoughts that you have been thinking for you and everyone else. What do you want to talk about? Ah, some things. It's a lot of trouble in this room. 